All right, I want to say uh, thank you for coming out to this anti-war event. It's, uh, it was refreshing to see, I guess, another Cuban, Cubano. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather escaped from Cuba in a dust cropper plane. Uh, so there used to be like maybe 46 planes there, dust croppers. Now there's like uh, 45. Uh, he had a toy compass to point north in the Key West, wow. a knife to fight off sharks, and a piece of mirror to reflect in case he got lost or stranded That's somewhere. a great story. Yeah. That's a great story. My so he was telling me, like, uh, very anti-communist, I guess, good leanings, I would say, right? right. Keepers are very, they uh -huh. see what big government is in, in that respect. Um, That's like the point I was making during my speech, that, you know, the last thing we want to do is model that kind of a system, right. a system where we uh, don't challenge our government, where we don't ask good questions, and that seems to be what's going on right now. Uh, you know, the proliferation of the corporatization of our media, I think, doesn't allow us to uh, tell the truth to the American people, and when you don't tell them the truth, you're basically making them irresponsible citizens. Because right. in a democracy, if you're not informed, if you don't reach out to find the information that's necessary, you're basically uh, letting down your government. Right. Now, what do you think about like when they say we have 100% literacy rate in Cuba? Um, I think they may have literacy. I think that their educational system, forced, probably works. The problem is they haven't been able to combine it with anything that is even close to working from an economic standpoint. Right. Well, Castro's ideas just sucked. I right. mean, I mean, this guy tried to cross-breed bulls and almost destroyed the entire uh, meat industry. So it's those kinds of boneheaded moves that uh, really can screw up an economy when you don't know what you're doing. And unfortunately, most socialist economies don't work in and of themselves that way. Right, yeah, and what, what's the point of having 100% literacy rate if all you can read is communist propaganda? Or if all you can do is have to follow exactly what the government tells you at all times. Right. Yeah, no, it, it, I agree with you. I mean, look, uh, I, I think in the end what we have to do is not necessarily um, go after countries like Cuba. I, I'm not for us sending Marines into, as I told in my story, Honduras because we think that the the new president may have had a left leaning. No, what we need to do is use our country to create an example for those countries, right. to show them how it is done. And you don't make friends uh, by bludgeoning people with a weapon. Right. And that's what we've been doing. Now, in terms of like refugee and migration stuff, very proper today. It's funny, like uh, a lot of the tensions are thinking, well, it's uh, very anti-Islam, anti-Muslim, but you never hear a lot of the people talk about maybe Obama when he ended the wet foot dry foot policy near the end of his term, mm -hmm. right? There wasn't much leftist outcry against that. What do you think that is? Well, you know, the whole Cuba policy has been driven by politics. Right. Um, and unfortunately, from both sides, okay? Uh, and unfortunately, it has never created an atmosphere where we can do something to help the Cuban people. Um, as you said, the left too often tries to kowtow uh, to the Cuban government. Right. Uh, the right tries to use it as a tool to m muster votes so they can win the next election because that part of Florida votes Republican. Right. If you go there and give a speech where you say, you know, Viva, you know, Viva Cuba Libre and down with Fidel. Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, I think uh, both parties have done a major disservice uh, to uh, what could have been a uh, relationship with Cuba that would have really helped the Cuban people. Right. I think uh, what the Democrats saw is like long-term demographics, and they so they know that they lean towards right, they lean against government, so they'll just kind of cut up a base of support of that and end the wet foot, dry foot policy. You know, um, I, I always wondered um, if by ending the wet foot, dry foot policy, which interestingly enough is a big conversation in Miami, and one of the problems the Cubans in Miami have is they lose credibility when they come here, and I'm talking about my own people and my own colleagues, they come to the United States and they declare how much they love America and how horrible Cuba is because after all, Cuba is a communist country, and then they spend every weekend in Havana. And that is right. a hypocrisy. Right. You can't come to the United States and say that government sucks, I hate Cuba, and then go to Havana to spend your weekends. And a ton of people in Miami, especially the new arrivals, mm -hmm. are doing that. Mm -hmm. I was raised differently. My mom and dad told me to essentially hate Fidel Castro. Right. It was part. It was in our yeah, blood, yeah. you know. Which is why when I interviewed, uh, you know, Castro, uh, not long after that, I was tossed out of the country. So. 
Um, there, there's this really peculiar uh, relationship that Cubans have between um, their 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 anti-communist uh, feelings, their pro-America feelings, and their yearning for whatever the hell is left in Cuba. Right. So they they got to deal with that. They got they got to figure that out. What did you think of like the way he died though? Like he died. I mean, it's great that he died finally, right? He's, he's outlived a lot of presidents, yeah. right? But then he died peacefully on his own terms. That, you know, he died at like 78 or something like that. He died as, as a brutal dictator. I don't feel like that's a good- What a hero to a lot of people in Cuba. Right. So right. Uh, yeah, the, see, this is the thing that we need to understand as Americans, that if uh, Fidel, for all his faults, uh, is seen by any part of Cuba as a truth teller, a guy who stuck it to the United States in its imperialist ways, then we fomented that. We allowed him to have that platform. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's the problem that we commit as Americans sometimes is we give guys who suck a platform by not by being bad, mm -hmm. by, by having a foreign policy which is mischievous and sometimes brutal in and of itself. Right. We create Castro's, we create Noriega's, right. we create these these, you know, the Saddam Hussein's. And, and that's where we need to look at ourselves. I mean, we could sit here and find all, all kinds of faults with Hussein and with Castro and with Noriega and all these other morons. But in essence, we need to look at what is it about our foreign policy that creates these monsters in these places. Well, my last question would be, there's a lot of talk about American interventionism and that's, uh, and the outcomes of it has been disastrous. What do you think of, um, like, is there a time or place for that? Like, uh, there was an American intervention here when France helped us in the American Revolutionary War. There's a time for intervention, but it has to be based on what this is, what is good for the people of that country, right. and possibly what is good for America as well. Not American corporations, the American people. Right. So if we're going to a place, it's because we might be able to have a, a fair deal with that country. Not going into Guatemala, taking out the country's president, who was duly elected, creating a giant military installation, inviting our, our, our giant corporations to go down there and start kind of running amok, and creating a disaster economically in that country. That's not good for the people of, uh, of uh, Honduras, right. uh, and I'm referring to the coup, the CAA Hillary Clinton coup of 2009. Uh, that's not good for the people of Honduras, that's not good for the American people, that's not good for the region, and it's certainly not good for democracy. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming out to this event. Uh, continue speaking the truth. Appreciate it. Glad to do it. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs>